All right. Coming up right now, we have a telesales expert, uh, Mr. Ryan Reynolds. Uh, he's an industry veteran and been tremendously successful. I've learned tons of stuff from him as far as how to produce, how to protect clients, how to dial. He actually taught me the confirmation code that everyone here at FFL uses. Um, and just a tremendous asset. He's not been here for some time, but has recently joined due to the upside and opportunity he sees at FFL of the fact that he can have lead accessibility, high comp, and build an agency that people are going to be well taken care of and protected. Um, well, well, Ryan has done so well in the field that recently he's like, Brady, he's like, I'm coming over, but I'm going to try this virtual stuff. And I was like, dude, just don't tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and which was wrong with me. And now that we're at a point in, in time where we understand that people want to work from where they want, they want to protect families nationwide. And, and, and in that period of time, he's nearly mastered it. Without further ado, I wanted to I'm humbled and honored and grateful for him to come on. And he's going to basically, you could see it on the table. He's opened the playbook on how to do vir telesales, virtual telesales at an incredibly high level. So without further ado, let's give a round of applause for Mr. Ryan Reynolds. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming on, brother. All right, guys. So I brought some notes, but is there any questions you want to ask me so far? Um, do you prefer in-home or telesales? If you had choice and you could sit in front of a client or you've got a client appointment uh, on the phone. Yeah, that's, I have this in my notes, but clients always going to be easier to sell for the simple fact in front that, of them. Yeah. Cause Got you it. can build that trust. You can personally connect with them. Um, so it's always going to be easier, but the convenience factor of the telesales is pretty nice too. So I think they're both good. I wouldn't yeah. say one's better than the other. It's just kind of a trade up. So I'm, I'm going to kind of talk a lot about that stuff sure. from this, but, but yeah, both are good. Good. Well, that now I wanted I wanted to preface that because yeah. people go, well, I, well, this or that. I'm like, you have to understand. There's pros and cons to both. And I got all the lists. Of the well, pros. I'm going to stop yeah. talking and let give the floor all right. to you. All, all right. right, let's do it. Let's do it. If you have questions, let me know. But so the first thing I've learned is um, in telesales is that there's not one way to do it. You know, I know a lot of guys are doing it a couple different ways. Obviously, you can you can have a dial day. You know, just like we do in the field, dial on Mondays, book your appointments for maybe Tuesday, Wednesday. That's what I do. And you can book it for your phone or you can book it for Zooms, right? Um, I want to figure out how to do it the phone way. Um, just because I wanted to hang out my, uh, <laughs> you know, a t-shirt and uh, some, uh, some pajamas and, and be comfortable while I was doing it and not have to dress up. So I was like, I'm going to crack this code on the phone thing. Hey, um, but other people can do the Zoom. Um, I do think that Zoom is going to build more trust because they can see your face. Um, I did have a couple of times that people can't, or kind of fighting it, don't trust me, I'll do a FaceTime call and I can see how that immediately gains trust. But I knew I knew just telesales is gonna be harder, but I wanted to crack the code on that for the freedom also that it gives you. So I'm gonna kind of go over some of that stuff. Um, so that's one way. Another way, I know some people doing it, they're very successful at it, is you can not have a schedule at all. You can dial when, when you don't have appointments and then book appointments whenever. So I know a guy that's writing 10K um, a week doing that as well. And so he just kind of dials and, and books. If he needs a schedule appointment that day, maybe at four o'clock, that's fine. And then he dials whenever he doesn't have appointments. If he gets a no-show, he dials. So it's just kind of like a mix. Uh, for me, I have ADD. So I got to like concentrate on one thing at a time. Otherwise, I'm too all over the place. You can ask my assistant. It's like if I'm texting, I'm like zoned out. So, so I need to have a structure. So that, that dial day and that, that run day kind of helps me out. Um, the other way you can do it is you can try to um, sell right when they pick up. And I know a guy that's very successful at that. So they're not setting appointments at all. And the key to that one is going to be uh, going into it right away, not asking if it's a good time, but you're basically just right when they pick up the phone, you're going right into your medical underwrite and, and acting like it's going to be a 10 minute call. We're just, we're just going into it. You're not asking for permission um, until they say, Hey, I don't have time to talk maybe 15 minutes into it. Then you can like, you can schedule the appointment that time. Um, so there's a lot, there's three, lots of different ways to do it. Just like with um, presenting out in the field or the way we run it, it's just, you got to kind of try them all out and kind of see which one works best for you. Um, I haven't tried those other two ways out right now. I'm just sticking to the, the booking appointments on Mondays and Thursdays and then running on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. So that's it for, for, so there's no real one way. Um, it's going to take some time. You know, I was in the field for 10 years. I became great at it. I would say I was a 10 out of 10. I was awesome at it. Um, when I came into doing uh, phone sales at first, the first week I did zero. I sucked at it. It was like, I was right back where I started in the field. It was like learning something brand new. So if you're going to transition into it, just know it's, it's going to take some time. Um, it took me probably like two weeks to really start getting the, getting the hang of it, uh, getting the confidence on the phone. 
um, which is all that is. It's really just confidence, you know, and anything it's through repetition, it becomes easier right now. You know, I'm not Grady. You see how confident he is in his calls. Cause he's done it a million times. I've done this like what, twice. So, <laughs> so a nervous, doing great. Right? But doing as I keep good. doing it, you know, I'm gonna get more confident. It's the same story obviously with, with this. So just give yourself a few weeks to a month to get better at it. And I still rate myself probably a six out of 10. I still there's, know there's a lot of adjustments, a lot of tweaks, like keep on experiment with to fine tune it, get it better and better. And the one thing I love that now this is out in the open is now we can all learn from each other more and take those pieces and, and keep evolving and getting better and better. So I think that's really cool. Um, one thing I noticed is obviously when you're driving, um, the advantage you have is that you have this downtime where you can listen to podcasts, right? And whenever I was out in the field, when I was listening to music versus listening to a podcast on training, my numbers would go up, right? Because I was in the zone from listening to someone else do it. Um, I've tried this a couple of different ways. And I think this is literally, I've seen my numbers drop in half if I don't do this, but my numbers double if I do do this. Okay. So because I don't have any downtime to be driving, listening to podcasts, I start every single morning uh, listening to a video. And even if you've been doing this for 10 years, you think you know everything and you're like, oh, there's nothing new I can learn. My system's working. It's not about learning something new. It's about watching someone that just killed it and is doing it and set your mind up for the day that if this guy can do it, I can do it. Right. And that's the key to this business is, you know, the reason why I switched to telesales is I knew there was people doing it. And yeah, I was failing the first couple of weeks, but I knew this guy could do it. So the only thing stopping me was me. Right. So I just had to readjust, um, keep trying and keep tweaking things. OK, so so watching a video every day is definitely going to change your mindset. I recommend that making that part of your schedule and okay. you're going to have more time now because you're not driving all over the place. So just make it part of your schedule. Ten o'clock is when I watch my video. OK. Um, you don't need talent for sales. Right. That's that's a key. It, it can be learned. I just I just know when I first started off, like I was the worst salesperson on the planet, worst dialer on the planet scared to do it but if you keep studying keep practicing you can get good at this and it's the same thing with face-to-face -face as it is tail sales it's going to take you some time but you can get good at it just like anything else out there um schedule when you run uh key to anything like this we already know this we talk about it all the time but same thing for me is it, i have to be consistent right so my my dialing schedule is 11 o'clock to six o'clock okay um on mondays and then my run time is 11 o'clock to six o'clock on Tuesdays. And I just make sure I stick to that schedule. If you're not consistent with buying leads every single week and having the same schedule every single week, you're just not going to see money, but consistency, I mean, consistency is going to be really huge for you too. Um, any questions, all that stuff? Those no, are just some general good. tips. No, I like okay. those. Um, Zoom, uh, telesale advantage, you know, you can dress how you want. Kind of talked about that earlier. Uh, the backdrop advantage, <laughs> you know, you can work outside, you can work in the pool, you can work while you're walking around. So a lot of times I'll be talking to someone making a sandwich, you know, because <laughs> I just have my Bluetooth and I can do that. So that's pretty cool. You can work anywhere in the world, right? Now you're remote. You want to go take a week vacation to Paris? Guess what? You can work out of the hotel room and still enjoy your vacation. So pretty cool. Um, and, and also when you're doing, doing no uh, telesales, uh, you, can, you can have your script, right? I mean, a lot of people struggle... Uh, it's an advantage when you're, when you're booking your appointments, right? You can have your script in front of you in case you mess up, but when you're in the in-home, right, you have to kind of memorize all that stuff. So the advantage of doing it over the phone is now you can have your script right next to you of how your opening goes, some good questions to ask some trigger lines and literally be looking at it in your presentation as well, which is pretty cool. So now you have a little cheat, cheat sheet while you're presenting as well as when you're dialing. So I think that's a huge advantage as well to kind of think of. Um, there's no driving, right? You have no gas, no car maintenance, no hotels, no, you're home every night. That's nice. You're home every single night. You don't have to spend nights in hotels. Um, the disadvantages though. So there's disadvantages, right? Um, I've noticed that you have to spend about twice as much on leads. Okay. Um, you're going to need more leads because of that trust factor. Um, you know, face to face is still going to be King. You can get bigger premiums. Uh, you, like you said earlier on the call today, they can't kick you out. They can't hang up the phone right? They're going to be a little quicker to get off the phone with you. It's easier. Okay. Um, but if you're, if you're, if you realize that we're running a business here and I think a lot of times people come into this, they think of this as a job. It's not, it's a business. You're running your own company. So we got to look at the from the right perspective. If you think about normal businesses, the, the, the beautiful thing about, you know, where we're at now in this company is that the return on the investment average, I think company-wise is probably about 500%, which is crazy. You know, my mom owns a shoe store 
and she has to spend a hundred thousand dollars to make 160,000. So that's a 60% ROI. And that's typically most businesses. I mean, most restaurants, when you Google it, it's average about 20%. So they're spending a million dollars to make 200 grand. Uh, uh, yeah. 200 grand. Yeah. So don't worry about if, if you want the convenience, the advantage factors of staying home, you are going to have to spend more, but again, it's going to be a wash at the end, right? You're still making the same amount of, amount of money at the end. Cause you're going to need some more leads to make up for that trust factor. Okay. Okay. Um, it's not a time saver. Okay. A lot of people are thinking, Oh man, I'm gonna save so much time. You do have to book more appointments. You know, I used to go out in the field and book 12 a week and do really good. You know, here I'm having to do double the appointments to make up for some no shows to make up for the trust factors and so on and so forth. Okay. So, so you're still spending a lot of time, extra time dialing and extra time running appointments. So it's not going to save you a ton of time. Okay? okay. So just know it's not like, Oh man, I get to work half the time, make the same amount of money. Okay. Um, all right. So that's good on that part. Let's go over the script though. Okay. And then I'll give you some more tips. Is here. your is your phone script like the this book is the, the phone script? And I've rewritten it like a billion times. And you know, with all scripts, all of them are good. You just kind of kind of find the one that you like the best. And then I'll pause if I see something good in here and why I think it works well and what I've noticed. How many appointments did you book? Uh, so using the script, about, you booked how many? About twenty five. Twenty five appointments, and how many did you actually sit on? Uh, probably about this week, probably like 18, maybe 18. Okay. Yeah. And then you closed probably like 70%. Okay. You closed 70%. So how many, what was, so you do, you, and we'll get in this. In a second, maybe, but I just uh, want to give some, some color. Right? Yeah, so what, what are we spending? How many are we booking? Are we spending enough to get enough appointments? Yeah. Which is then, you, I mean, it's, it's at bats, right? I mean, it's, it's all about at bats. How many appointments you book, how many at bats you have is how many potential hits, uh, hits, uh, doubles, triples, and home runs you can hit. And so that's yeah. part of it. So you're setting yourself up by having, I mean, 25 appointments is, I mean, it's a standard run week, uh, but at the same time, we're just doing it all through tele. But I do like how you're crystal clear. Like, it's not like a time saver. Now you get to do it in your slippers and your t-shirt and your pajama pants while you're making a sandwich, which is, I mean, it has its, has its ups and downs. It, you know, I wasn't that disciplined. I knew if I was home trying to run appointments, my wife would be like, Hey, can you hold the baby for a minute. And I'd be like, well, she's cute. All right. I'll hold her. And then now, now I'm not dialing, but like for, for some of us, they lack that discipline. We're leaving the house creates the, like, I left the house, the doors closed. I'm, I'm wearing a polo. I got my lanyard on and I got to work, you know? So there's, it's all, I'm, I'm just, we're like, pulling back the, the, the curtain and giving all the, all the truths today. So 25 appointments, let's hear the script. Yeah. And then I'll give you afterwards, I'll give you some kind of tricks and, and advantages on that script too. But awesome. So today you're going to be Yvonne. You told me to bring in a lead. This can be a mortgage protection lead, okay. obviously. So I want you to talk in a high voice like a girl. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so we can have some fun. <laughs> so you're Yvonne. Okay. All right. Okay. Blonde hair, beautiful girl. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, and you can do it on mortgage protection mailers. Um, you know, the same thing about the leads is if you're going to get mailers, they're just going to be higher quality because it took more time to fill out. So okay. you can deal with the internet lead as well. Just requires more dial time, obviously. Um, but we'll, we'll kind of practice as if it was a mortgage protection mailer. Got so it. That's about half of what I run right now. Okay. All right. All right. So I'd say, Hey, Yvonne, uh, I'm Ryan. I'm calling about that mortgage protection information requested on your, shoot, I don't have the lead in front of me. On your movement mortgage loan, <laughs> this is that mail you filled out and sent back to us. Talked about paying off your house in case of a death or illness. Just need to confirm your loan amount is looks like one hundred fifty four thousand, and it looks like your birthday is eight twenty one eighty three. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, great. Well, I can't go over this right now because we have other other appointments scheduled today. But uh, what time do you typically get home from work? Five. About five o'clock. Okay. And then, so what triggered you to fill out this form and mail it back? What was your concern? What were you looking, why, why are you looking to, what were you looking to get into? Uh, I have kids and I wanted to make sure if something happened, uh, the, you know, the house gets paid off. Okay, great. So it just sounds like you're looking for some protection, um, in case things don't go according to plan, the house will be paid off, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a line that I added in, uh, that we usually do in the beginning of our opening, but I, I wanted to stop the no shows. And so if I was giving them a reason for why they're having appointment on the call, then I, I saw my no shows go down. Um, a lot of people do say this next one, I thought I had to. Okay. So if you want to say that, oh, I thought I had to. Okay. And then I say, it's not required. And I'm doing a pull away because I, I kind of, when we're, when we're booking appointments for face-to-face, -face, we kind of want to book everything possible because we know we can knock on the door, even if they forgot. 
But on the phone, I want to be really efficient with my time. So I can condense it down and make sure I can get all my appointments in three days and make a lot of money. So if, if they're not going to be there or they're not that interested, I don't want to book the appointment. So I'm almost kind of giving them like an out. And I also think that because I'm pulling back and not trying to giving them an out, I think they kind of trust me more. They're like, this must not be like a scam or something. Cause he's literally telling me I don't have to book an appointment. Why would a scammer do that? Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, it's not required, but I am a medical field underwriter assigned to you to go over the plans you qualify for to pay off your house in case of death, illness, or disability. There are several different plans and options, and you can pick the one that fits your budget. That being said, and it's okay either way, is this protection you wanted on your house or not? Okay. Now it's kind of weird. That line I thought when I wrote it, that we'd get it like 50% saying, no, nah, it's okay. But we actually get a lot of people that say yes. So uh, it's probably like maybe only 10% that say actually no, but that person that said, no, he was, if I would have booked it, he was going to no show me anyways. Mm -hmm. And so it's taking up a valuable time slot away from another family that I could be helping. So I'd rather throw it away and get in front of the people that I can talk to than waste my time with no shows. That's okay. great. Making sense. Yeah. All right. Then I'd say, okay. Then they'd say after five o'clock. Okay. Well, let me see what openings I've left. It looks like I have right now available tomorrow, which is going to be Friday. Um, I do have a six o'clock or seven 30 available. What time works for you? Mm, seven 30. Okay. And then is there any reason why you can think of now why you wouldn't be home at that time? Like you'd be driving, stop at the grocery store or, you know, anything like that you can think of. Are no. you always home at that time? I'm home. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just required to be home. Just want to make sure. Um, and I do see that there's only one name here on the form you filled out, sent back. Um, who is the house going to go to if you were to pass away? Uh, my daughter. Your daughter. Okay. Does she live with you at the house? Yeah. Okay. Well, since you guys are both live at the house, you're both required to be there. Um, does that time work for both of you guys? Will she be home there as well? well? She, she's eight. So. Oh, she's eight. Yeah. Okay. I guess I should have looked at the age. <laughs> All right. So if you do that for the older ones, you want to ask that for the Got daughters it. as well, but yeah. Okay. We guys both required to be there, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, all right. I just need you to grab a pen for that confirmation number. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right. It's seven W five, two, um, expect to receive a call between, uh, seven 30 and eight or around that time between seven 30 and eight in case my previous appointment goes late, give yourself about 45 minutes for that phone appointment. Um, in case you have some additional questions again, that's going to be on Friday. And that's going to be August 30th. And my name is Ryan Reynolds. Okay. And then after we're done with this call, I'm going to text you my credentials. So you can go ahead and look me up and verify me. Okay. okay. Now, can you go ahead and uh, read all that back to me and make sure we have it correct? Uh, 75W2, Ryan Reynolds. And then what was the arrival time? Uh, 7.30 on Friday. Seven, between seven, I'm sorry, not arrival time. Sorry. <laughs> what was the call around going to be between 7.30 and 8? You got that written down? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah, just give me that 30 minute window. And then can you add a reminder to your fridge or calendar or phone so you don't forget? Sure. Okay, great. Thanks for doing that. Well, we're looking forward to working with you and helping your family on Friday. Expect a call between again, 7, 30, and 8. And we'll talk to you then. All right. Thank you. That's it. That's it. So it's super clean. It's just clean. Yeah. And it has, I mean, it has a spot if there's one name or two, lead, two names. And this will be on the, this is on the training website launching tomorrow guys. So get ready for that. You'll see it tomorrow. Um, so it's just, I mean, it's, it's like, it's like a standard appointment we would book, but it's yeah. just, you're trying to get takeaways. Your goal is to eliminate no shows. Our goal is efficiency, right? If you want to do virtual telesales, then you can't have, you can't have half appointments. You can't, I mean, cause like you said, if we know they're going to be home after five, we can go door knock them at eight 30 and say, Oh, I got the form and we show up. Like we can do. It. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and texting the credentials, that's what's really important is like I'd send a link, um, you know, to whatever state it is. I'd send them my Connecticut state license, like an actual screenshot of it. And then okay. also the link to look me up as well. You'd give them a link. And, and yeah, to link me up in the department of insurance for Connecticut or for New Hampshire, like direct them right to it. Um, and then just tell them a lot of times on the phone, say, Hey, I'm going to send you a link to verify me. Go ahead and look me up. So you know who I am when I call. Okay. Um, and I think that really helped out the no shows too. Cause the biggest thing is about trust, right? Um, sometimes I'll send a picture of my driver's license as well. Okay. Um, so anything that kind of get them to know that you're not a scammer, cause that's the one thing that can mess up telesales as everyone thinks you're a scammer. Sure. Some more things you can do to prove that um, you're going to be in a good boat. And I, then people aren't going to no-show. I think I was getting a lot of no-shows before because I wasn't doing that. People are like, I don't know, this guy might be a scammer. I don't want to answer the phone. Sure. So now that I'm sending my credentials right when I'm off the phone, 
you know, I think they trust me. And it's they like you book an appointment with any, like someone that's coming to my house tomorrow right. to like, you know, right. Yeah. But book an appointment. Do you do any sort of, uh, do you use Calendly or any other sort of appointment booker reminder yep. type software? Yeah. So I use Calendly. Um, and it's just nice because I can, I book it myself. Okay. So, so never, ever, so I, I tried this, this method out. It's like, oh man, I can just text people and they're going to book the appointments themselves. They not, no one ever did it. So, um, use Calendly. It's kind of nice. Cause you can just book it and go on there. And then if you have a meeting like today or whatever's going on, dentist appointment, or you taking a day off, it's not going to show up in there. So it's just, it's really helpful for that. Um, I'm going to go over some tips sure, on that. In a second. Please. So, uh, good tips for, for dialing. And I know I did a terrible job on that, which is kind of reading it. So you get an idea of the flow, but talk loud. Um, never pause any kind of pauses. You're going to get objections coming in. Only stop talking um, with a question, right? Only stop cautioning with a question. So never stop talking until you ask a question. That way you're controlling the conversation. Um, and that's going to be either with a choice, right? Like, do you prefer 630 or, or 730, right? Or it's going to be with a yes question. Like, is your birthday 62181? I know that's a yes because it's written on the form. Right. Mm -hmm. But try not to ask questions that can end with no's like, you know, does Saturday work for you? No. Right. So those are not going to be good questions. Um, any rebuttals mm -hmm. I get, I literally just say, that's why I'm calling go back to the script. Right. I mean, you can look at this. If, oh, you, it's excellent. if you want, we can try it out. Like watch this right here. Um, so what triggered you out the fill out the formula back? What was your concern? Um, I don't know. I thought I had to. Yeah. That's actually why I'm calling. So what made you fill out the form? <laughs> And mail it back. Got it. Uh, I don't, I don't know my, I, it, it was interesting. Say how much does it cost? How much does it cost? That's actually why I'm calling. Um, let me see what times I've left. <laughs> it looks <laughs> like I have a five. Got it. So you just say that every time. Any rebuttal? Dude, these are just great. Things. That's what I'm, that's why I'm calling. Literally go back to your script. And it really helped me out as I was training someone. And, you know, we have a lot of long winded rebuttals written out and they can be kind of, um, you know, scary for someone that's new and dialing. And one time I was practicing with her and I was like, let's just try. That's why I'm calling. That's all you got to do. And then go right back to the script. And it worked every time. You can just ignore rebuttals because I feel that clients literally throw out objections that I've learned over 10 years. Um, not because they want the answer to the objection. I think it's just to test you um, to see if you're real or not, to see if you're a scammer or not. Because I've had 90% of people that tell me don't have time to talk. I ignore the objection. And they talk to me for 20 minutes. So that, that taught, taught me right there that that objection, you can just ignore it. And the same with all those objections, right? So anytime you give it more breath, you're just coming off needy. And especially when you're starting off anew, it's easy just to say, that's why I'm calling you go back to your script. You don't have to really think about any objections and it will work every time because you're basically saying, look, I'm going to get to it. That's what the purpose of the call is here. Quiet. And we're going to be okay. <laughs> and that's coming off confident, right? Yeah. Not coming off needy. Like, Hey, I need to cater to you, which is what we don't want to be on the call. You know, trying to convince somebody we're Got just it. doing our job. Right. So that one works really good. Um, some tips for, for booking. Uh, when I first started doing it, I was kind of booking them all over the place, but I would book like a couple on Thursday or whenever I possibly could. Um, as soon as I, and I was doing like early ones, like eight o'clock in the morning. And then sometimes the late ones, and I was just going insane. And as soon as I condensed my days to three days where I did 11 o'clock to six o'clock only, I was like, I'm only booking on Tuesday. I'm only booking on Wednesday and I'm only booking on Friday. I'm not doing these little sporadic ones on Saturday, a couple here and there. And my numbers doubled. And I think the reason for that is because your mental state is better. You know, if, if you have, and I've noticed that same thing, same thing out in the field, you know, when I, I would dial Mondays and just run Tuesday, Wednesdays, it did that forever. And I was making tons of money doing that instead of all over the place, because when you have six in a row, or in this case on the phone, which I'm getting to 10 in a row, the, the no's don't hurt as much. Right. But if you have two no's and then one sale, it hurts. If you have a bunch of them and there's a no, and then a yes, no, 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 yes you don't remember the no's because just three yes. And you're like, okay, I did pretty good today. <laughs> yeah. right? It didn't matter if you had seven no's. So yeah. condensing them together seemed to skyrocket my numbers up, you know, yeah. at least double it. So keep, keep a schedule and just stick to it. And don't book on your dial days or your days off or whatever. Okay. Um, 45 minute appointment. So this allowed me to condense my appointments into um, to book a lot in, in a window. So I could be more efficient in my time. So I would always book 45 minute appointments with a 30 minute um, call window, right? So I'd start at 11 and the next one would be 1145. The next one would be at uh, 
1230, doing the math. 115 right? to exactly. 45. And so now in eight hours, I can fit 11 appointments. And if they all show up, that's great. I can get 11 appointments done, which in the field, you know, in eight hours, you might be able to get to five, right? right? So you're getting double the appointments now by doing telesales, which is pretty cool. So more efficient with your time. Um, and then I book on the West Coast. I'm on the West Coast and I dial on the East Coast. So now I can, <laughs> if I get done by 6 p.m., it's actually 9 p.m. over there. And we know that the, the prime time, you know, it's time slots are usually five to nine. So that's kind of the advantage. If you're on the West Coast and doing telesales, you don't have to work late. You're working late to 6 p.m. So that's kind of cool. I can spend some time with my family, um, do some more son, research yeah. on the agency, yeah. building a team, doing trainings, you know, any of that kind of stuff. So take advantage of that, that time zone difference. Um, and now in, the, in that prime time zone, in the field, you know, between five and nine, I can maybe get three appointments, right? It's true. And now I can get six appointments. Okay. A huge time zone. If you want to do both, right. Maybe you get some leads on the West coast and the East coast. So for the East coast, you dial from two to six, that's going to be five to nine over there. Right. And then for the West coast, you're running from five to nine. Now in seven hours, you can fit 10 appointments where normally in the field, you can only do three in those prime time hours of five to nine. So you don't have to work Saturdays anymore because you can fit 10. Let's just say you did, did East and West. You did it on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can run 30 appointments during primetime hours and not have to work a weekend. Weekends off. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I mean, pretty good. I mean, I mean I we work weekends, but I, you, you could, can, you could run. You, this is how someone could run 60 appointments a week doing this model. Mm -hmm. And what the key thing we need to make sure we're hearing though is 30 appointments, 30 appointments, 30 appointments. He's not saying I book three, 25, yeah. 25 plus 25, 30. 30, 25 to 30 points. I don't book three on a day and, and then two show two don't show up and I get a no, like that's how you, that's how you go crazy in, in anything in any business is, is the lack of, of setting yourself up, right. Of putting yourself in a position to have enough people come into your restaurant to buy enough burgers because you didn't have advertising and et cetera. Like you're doing enough advertising from leads to booking appointments to setting yourself up to run both prime time. I mean, that's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. No, I, I drop, a, drop a F in the comments <laughs> below if you're fascinated like I am right now, because I'm literally fascinated. I, I personally used to drive out to like Lake Havasu all the time, which is three and a half hours. And I get home at like one in the morning. Yeah. And right now I do stop at six. It's been nice to eat, you know, at seven with my family and, and get some work done at night. But the advantage is, yeah, if I got some West Coast, ooh, if you're making some more money there too. So, you it's know, awesome, bro. Yeah. Or, you, or if you're on the East Coast, you wake up earlier. Right. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Just, you can just take advantage of those two time zones either way. Brilliant. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Um, so here's some, some tips on no shows, right? So everybody I've talked to when it came to, uh, doing virtual sales, they were always getting no shows. They're like, I don't know. I'm just getting 50% no shows, 50% no shows. Well, I got it down to about 20, 25%, which is pretty cool. And it sounds kind of crazy, but here's the thing. Maybe it was part of that script doing the takeaway, making okay. sure I'm only booking appointments that are going to stick, um, or that I think you're going to stick and not trying to push them into it. Um, and doing that takeaway. And then also, um, when I tried Calumny before, and I tried so many different methods where I would send out, you know, an email four days before, and then two days before and a day before, and, and then four hours before the appointment, right before the appointment and text messages, all this stuff and have it automatically sent out from Calumny. None of my no-shows changed, still 50%. Okay? okay. But then I just decided that, Hey, why don't I just take that down to just one email, one email and one text message with Calumny that sends it out right when I book it. One that books it, or one that sits sent out 24 hours before, one email and one text message, which I actually think I might take away the email thing because it seems like I get cancels from the email. So I might actually, probably this week, I'm going to get rid of the email together. So it seems like it cancels Let us out. know how it works. Yeah. And then, um, and then I don't do anything else than that except for send a text. And it's really this simple. <laughs> I just say this in the morning. Every morning before I start my day, I just text them this. Just say basically, hey, Bob, it's Ryan just confirming our phone appointment today. Expect to call around 3.30 or 4 from this number. That's it. It's so simple and easy. With a picture of you or a picture of your license? Or Usually what? I'll send either a picture of me or a picture of my license. Do you or a lanyard you ever used to wear that you could take a picture of and send a picture of your lanyard? Um, you could do that too. Yeah, that, that's actually a good idea too. Maybe a picture of you as well. Okay. But just keeping it nice, short, and simple. 
and easy to read. And that's what worked. And then my no-show rates went away. Plummeted. It literally went up to like some weeks I'm getting like 15% no-shows. That's crazy. It's so just, Which just is a, like standard. If you're running appointments, just to send it, houses. Well, cause when, the, when we, when we were running them in the field, we never wanted to send a text in the morning cause they would text us back and cancel right away. <laughs> right. Cause they don't want you showing up to the house, but those are the people that, you know, you're knocking on the door that we're going to cancel here for some reason, when you're booking a phone appointment, those people that didn't want you showing up to the house are willing to do a phone appointment. So just give me a quick reminder. And because it's not coming from Calendly, which we get so many messages robotic from like the dentist or, you know, all, all these robotic messages, people, people just kind of look at it, can tell it's robotic and ignore it. But if it looks like it's coming from your phone, it's personal, you know, then that seemed to work. Just that simple little phrase. And my no-shows went down. Crazy. That's awesome, dude. Okay. So where are we at? No shows on that. Um, another quick thing is when you're booking your appointments, um, we used to say expect to call between, you know, 3.30 and 4. And that was causing a lot of mistakes because they thought the call would start at 3.30 and end at 4. And so now the word we change it to is expect to call around 3.30 to 4. Got so it. I use that around in here. You can see it says around instead of between. So okay. that kind of helped on that. So we should have a 30 minute window. Cause it's 45 minutes. I mean, if that appointment goes into an hour or an hour 15, you know, that's okay. Cause you have a 30 minute window. So it's all good. Call the next one. And sometimes you get so busy that you just, you actually fall behind you miss one, which is great. You just call the person up and reschedule it. Go, Hey man, I got too busy. Too many families I had to protect that day and, and you can reschedule it. So awesome. don't worry about it. If you start running behind. All right. So then want to get in the presentation. Yeah. Okay. So the presentation I've, I've done my presentation opening, probably changed it up. I don't know, like a thousand times. And honestly, I get so bored saying the same thing all the time that, that I always change it. I mean, literally two weeks ago, I think I, I heard Hayden's, you did a, po a podcast with Hayden. Stud. Hayden. Yeah, yeah. Stud. And I just liked his opening. So I literally wrote it out word for word, stapled it on my, <laughs> on my bulletin board and just read it for two weeks just to have something different to say. <laughs> and it worked every time. But the key is, is it's just four things you have to cover in every opening. And as you guys are watching, you know, videos and training, um, these four things are in every single person's opening, whether it be, you know, Hayden's, whether it be um, the heavy hitters, Julian, you know, anybody that you see that's on there, they're, they're going to cover these things. So the first thing is you got to cover trust. And I write these things down. Trust is number one. Okay. You got to cover need, right? Why are you here? Why do they need to get this? You need to cover shopping right? Why they don't need to shop anywhere else. And they need to cover qualify first. Okay. This is going to stop to think about, right? So I just have a, have these four words on my bolts and board and then I kind of freestyle. I just make sure I hit each one in my own way. And at first when I was, I was trying to write out a script and just read from it and see what Hayden's work better, would this work better, would this one's person's work better. And what started to work better was honestly just me having these four words up on the, cause I was just sounding more natural and confident. I wasn't okay. trying to read from a script. I was just being myself. And sometimes I could change it up depending on who I was talking to. So for trust, I would just say, Hey, if we start at this point and say, Hey, Grady, um, calling you about that mortgage protection point we have, um, how's it going? Going well. How are okay. You? Good, good, good. And then, uh, is your, is your daughter here? Let's pretend she's 18. Sure. Yeah. Okay. She's in the other room. Awesome. And what was her name? Presley. Okay. Can you go get her? Presley, come here. Okay. Hey, Presley, do you have me a speakerphone now? Yeah. Hey, Presley, how are you? Yeah, just required to be here so we can get this done. Um, so I did sent over to, sent over to you last time we taught um, a copy of my license, and I'm just required to show you that. Were you able to look me up and verify me? I didn't. Okay. You want to give you a second to do that now? No. It's if you no click on deal. the link, you can just look it up and make sure you know who I am. Okay. Okay. So I said that every time. So that's nail and trust. Sure. Right? Now they know, now they can trust me. Um, need. So why'd you guys fill this out? Well, you know, what were you guys looking for? What kind of trigger you to do that? Uh, I just wanted to make sure if something happened that she, you know, wouldn't something happen to me, she'd be able to keep the house. Okay. Now that's a great line, but literally 80% of people don't say that. 80% <laughs> of people, you got to dig in deep. They're going to say, Oh, just looking into it. I don't know. I want to see what the price is where, you know, something like that. So okay. just looking into it. Okay. Why are you looking into it? I just want to see what the prices were. Okay. Why do you want to see what the prices were? Um, I think it's something I should probably get, but I don't just don't enough about it. Okay. And then why do you think you might want to get it? Because if something happens to me, I want to make sure that 
you know, my daughter can keep the house. Boom. Okay. So there you go. So you basically just keep asking questions over and over and over again until they have to answer that one solid question. Once they say it, then you're like, okay, great. So it sounds like to me, what you want to get, and you're always reconfirming it sounds like what, why I'm here is in case something happens and it makes sense, it's affordable, right? That you want to make sure your daughter gets to keep the house because we don't know what tomorrow might bring. Are we on the same page? Yeah. That okay. Right. So that's the need. Just keep asking questions and you're going to get people that kind of keep avoiding it like he was doing. And then you just got to keep going. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Okay. And eventually like, they're going to answer. It's just three minutes in the call. Yeah. Three minutes in the call. Okay. All right. So my job as a broker now we're covering shopping because we don't want them to think they need to meet with five different agents. Right. So we cover shopping. So my job as a broker um, allows me to actually shop about 30 A rated companies. And we're going to look at the best of the best, you know, like uh, John Hancock, um, Aetna, Mutual of Omaha, names you've heard of. Okay. And they all rate you differently. So I'll look at all of those at the same time. And the advantage of that is, you know, you're not, I don't work for one company that you're kind of stuck with like three products. You know, we have a hundred, which we can make sure we can get you the best plan that actually fits your needs. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, perfect. And then what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be your medical field owner. Now we're in qualifying, right? Letting them know I have to qualify them first, right? So I'm your medical field owner. I'm going to spend about three minutes on some health questions. And then all these policies are rated based on your health and age. Okay. Um, so once I give you some plans in a second here, and it's going to be the exact cost, and they're going to range in kind of budget features, what we're going to do is, is pick a plan to protect the house, and everyone can find one that's in their budget, okay? okay? And then the insurance company is the one that's going to take the time to think about it, not you, because they're the ones taking the risk. If something happens to you tomorrow, they're the ones that have to pay out $100,000 or $200,000, and 10% of the time, they say no. They say it's not worth the risk. We're not going to take you. If you get accepted... Okay. You're going to have 30 days to make changes to it. If you want to change your plan up or down or around, that's okay. If for some reason you decide in that 30 days, Hey, I have a crystal ball. I can predict the future. And you know, the lot of numbers, you're going to give me a call too. So I can quit this job. And we can be rich. Then you don't have to keep the plan too. They're happy not to cover you. It's not going to affect me. It's not going to affect the insurance company. The only person that's going to affect is your daughter. Okay. So you can make that choice within that 30 days. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now it doesn't make sense to think about something that we don't know we can get yet. Right. Correct. So what we're doing today is seeing if we can qualify you and see if we can even get you coverage first. Got it. Are we on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So that's the opening. Okay. Just like that. And you can say it in, in all the different ways, just make sure. And, and there's so many beautiful lines out there. So what I would suggest is you go on YouTube Maybe you don't connect with my style. Maybe you connect with this person's style. Start writing down some cool trust ones. Okay. What's building trust? What's building need? What's building shopping, right? What, that I don't need to shop anymore. And what's building the, I need to think about getting rid of that in the opening before you get to the end. You know, I need to qualify you first, okay? Um, and then I would go through this medical sheet. And I have a form that I fill out literally on my desk that I just made. And... Um, it has some good questions up here, you know, that I can ask in that need part it says like, if you pass away tomorrow, what do you have in place today that would pay out to, to your daughter, right? I'm going to find out the life insurance they have, you know, what kind of income would your daughter be losing each month? You know, yeah. something happened, you know, when it comes to protection, what's your biggest concern? Um, if you got sick, disabled, you can't work anymore. How long can you maintain your bills for? You know, these are great questions that these you can good, ask. Okay? Questions, yeah. So you can write all the, the, the advantage of the telesales. You can write all these questions out and have them right in front of you. So you don't forget. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. But it, I think it always helps to kind of design your own presentation because the way that you like to do it, or if you like someone else saying it is you're going to sound more confident. And again, why I was so bad in the beginning was because I didn't have enough repetition to sound confident. So whatever you think you, you like someone else saying they're going to, you're probably going to like saying it too. Sure. So I say, just copy them. Okay. And just fill it all out, you know, get the medical, um, ask them, you know, for mortgage protection. I always get the loan amount, you know, right here and go, okay, how, how much is a loan? How much is it praised for, you know, in 15 years, let's just say your loans, 200,000 in 15 years, are you going to pay that thing down? Or is it going to be worth still 200,000 loan? I would pay it down some. Well, how much do you think you'd pay it down to? 15 years, if it's $200,000 loan, probably $100,000. Probably about $100,000. Now, now your, your loans, obviously, the value of the house is probably going to go up, right? Yeah. Okay, it always does. I mean, I bought a house in 2011 and, sorry, 2007, and then 2008, it dropped one hundred grand. 13 years later, up one hundred fifty. So it always goes up. How much do you think it's going to go up, you know, you, you say in 15 years? 50 or 100. 50 or 100? Okay. Yeah. So let's just say 75 in the middle. Okay. Okay, so it's worth 275, all right? 
and then you die and it get the house gets foreclosed on and, and, and you have a hundred thousand dollar loan. Um, actually I didn't say that way. I'll say it that way. 275. Okay. Yeah. So if you sold your house, if you sold your house in 15 years, right. For, uh, for 275 and you paid off your loan of a hundred thousand, how much do you have left? 175. 175,000, right? Yeah. So this is an asset that right now you have nothing, right? But in 15 years, you have $175,000 of coverage. Pretty yeah. impressive, right? Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Do you have a car? I do. Okay. Do you pay car insurance on it? I do. Is that an asset that goes down in value? Yes. Okay. Does your house go up in value? Yes. Is your house worth more than your car? Yes. Well, don't you think it makes sense to have insurance on your house? Yes, of course. Okay. So that's why we're here. Okay. <laughs> Most people agree with you. Got okay. it. So that's some stuff I do in that section right there. Okay. Um, and it's always good to, you know, engage and ask questions rather than statements. If you're, you saw, I led him all the way through with, with, with questions and now he's paying attention. If I'm making statements, he's only listening to 50% I'm saying. Okay. Right. But if I'm engaging with questions, I'm controlling the conversation. Now he's engaged and he's listening and it becomes his idea and I'm a helper versus a salesman. Got it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I just present the products. And then every single time I say this at the end, and this is literally from uh, Paul McLean, you know, this is the close. You just present the three options and we I have it written, you know, right at the bottom here. It says, you know, we can't make a decision today because we don't know if you're going to qualify, but if you were to qualify, which one of these do you think makes the most sense, you know, based on your, based on protection and affordability. How do you show them the three options on, on, I'm going to actually have some notes on that. So I'm going to get into it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to get into it. I got some tips on that too. Cause that's, that's another key to getting to be good on the phone as well. All right. So some more tips, so trips, Paul McLean says right there. Um, oh, this is really good tip. This works out pretty good. Client says, you know, we just don't make decision today. We need to discuss it. Um, I just, go, I just go, okay, great. Just put me on mute. I'll be here. Let me know when you're ready. You just throw on you. <laughs> that's good. And then they come back and pick one. So that's good. So you don't that's have to call good. them back. Yeah, just go ahead. Oh, that's no worries. Um, I'll give you guys about 10 minutes. If you need anything, I'll be right here to answer any questions. Just put me on mute and we'll be good to go. How's that usually work out? It works out great. You know, I'd say probably 90% of the time they come back and pick one. Okay. Um, and then 10% of the time, like, oh, I decide not to do it. And then I'm going to be transitioned to an accidental, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So show us how you present just because oh. we're rolling. Yeah, I'm going to in a second. Cool. All right. And then Google and Google the bank account. So this is a really good tip as well. So when you get to the payment information, um, because you're on a telesale and you get to bank information, like, is it checking or savings? And then they go checking and you're like, all right, uh, what's the bank name? And they tell you the bank name and like, what state did you open up in? And then you just Google that routing number. And then you go, okay, it looks like it's pulling up a routing number of 221-678173. And they're like, I'm not sure if that's it. I'm like, okay, can you go verify that? And then they have to go grab their checkbook. And then when you, it, it makes you get credibility as this. So a lot of the systems do pulled up anyways, true. like Aetna does and some other carriers. So I just act like I'm already pulling it up if it's here, it doesn't do that. And then that way it gives me credibility that how would he know that? Like obviously as a system that's doing it and then getting that, that bank account information is pretty standard. Okay. And then, and then for the bank account information, it is blacked out. I always say that. Um, it is blacked out, so I can't see what I'm typing for security purposes. So it does make me put it in twice to make sure it matches. But go ahead with that account number. So I always say that every time to build some more security into it. Does that make sense for the bank account? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thought that was a good tip. That is good. That is good. All right. So presenting options. This is going to be the last part. Um, the key to this, what I found is, is speed, right? Cause I want to get it down to like 45 minutes so I can run as many appointments as possible a day to more condensed time. So not all spread out working seven days a week. Okay. Um, and simplicity, you know, keeping it very simple, um, in the home, I can write down stuff and do visuals and all that kind of stuff on the phone. If I give them too much, too much, too complicated of policies, there's going to be too much to think about. Got it. Okay. So I keep it extremely simple. So for example, um, let's just say on that last lead, it was 150,000. Okay. Actually for purposes of this, it's to make it easier. It's, we'll do a more complicated one. Let's do 300,000. Okay? okay. So let's just say anyone that's anyone that's 45 and below 45 and below, I automatically go to the Americo CBO 100 every single time. Okay. 45 and below. And I give them two options. I give the full amount of the house. So on the CBO 100, it would be 250,000 
of a uh, of full coverage, pay out if you have a natural cause, and then it'd be three a fifty thousand dollar rider for the accidental rider. So I can go up to three hundred thousand because the max you can go on the CBO one hundred is two fifty. Otherwise, it requires a swab test. Correct. Okay. So that's how I get to three hundred. So I present it like this. I go, okay, this first product, it's a really cool product. And and also if they said if they said they wanted to pay off their house early, then I always pr present the 25 year, right? Mm -hmm. Or if they're, um, if they're, if they don't have a lot of money that I might present the 30 years as cheaper, but anyone that wants to pay off their, their house early or they're younger, I only pitch the 25 year. So I'll say, okay, so the way this plan works, grab a pen. It's going to be, we'll write these down actually. Cause I write it down with them as I'm talking. So okay. I can make sure I'm going with the pace. Okay. I'm like, all right, cool. So write this down. It's going to be, uh, 300,000 if you die of an accident. Okay. Does that making sense? And accidents are like from injury, the stuff you see in the news, still the fourth leading cause of death. So it does happen. Below that, we're going to write down 250,000 for natural causes, for okay. natural causes. Okay. Got that down? It's going to be 250,000 for critical illness, write down critical illness, and then 250,000 for chronic illness. Now, critical illness is huge to protect you while you're living. Um, a lot of work policies don't include that. So if you get a heart attack, cancer, stroke, anything like that, you're going to have access to that 250000 tax-free. That's so, so big. Yeah. If you can't show up to work, you know, your money stops, right? And I, I talked to a widow one time where her husband had a work plan. He got cancer and he was out of work for six months and the policy got dropped and he died and they lost the house anyway. So if he would have had his private coverage right here, and have this critical illness, they would have been able to survive, you know, and stay in that house. So huge right right there. And I tell that story every time. Okay. Uh, chronic illness, 250,000. This is kind of like similar to long-term care, but it's if you get need help with your daily living activities, two daily living activities. So that's huge. It goes for 25 years. And at the end of 25 years, you get a hundred percent of your money back. Okay. Now, if someone gives you all your money back, what did that make the policy? Free. Free. So basically it's a free protection plan. This is making sense. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to add it up and I use a mortgage calculator a lot of times to figure out how much they owe left on their house. And I'd say, so this plan, it's, you know, say it's 200 bucks a month. Um, at the end of that time, you're going to save up $50,000. And if anything ever happens to you during that savings account, during that time period, it's going to turn into 250,000 or 300,000. Is that a good deal? That's a great deal. And if you get all your money back, what did you pay for it? Nothing. Free. So the advantage of the 25-year one is that you actually get your money back and then you can use that money to cut off your loan, cut your loan short by five years. And you save yourself five years of mortgage payments. So this plan right here, it's the Ferrari plan because it includes everything. It's hard to qualify for. So I don't know if you can get it, but it's 300,000, 250. Again, and you repeat yourself a lot on this stuff because you got to say it three times to understand it. So sure. 300,000 for accident. 250 natural causes, 250 for critical, 250 for chronic, 25 year, which that's all that protection. Pretty cool plan. That's number one. That's Two, cool. it's free. That's very cool. And the third pretty cool thing is that you get to save yourself five years of mortgage payments getting this plan. Okay. Now, does that plan make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. So the second plan. So every single time when I give the second plan, I don't change anything at all about the first plan. I just reduce it in half. Okay. So it's simple. Once they understand one, the other one's the same. I don't want to go, this is a 25 year and this is a 30 year. This one comes with disability, not disability. It's too complicated. If they Got can it. understand one, it's pretty easy to understand that the coverage is reduced and the premiums are reduced. So I'd say, Hey, this next plan's 300,000. It's 150,000. If you die of a natural causes, 150,000 for critical illness, 150,000 for chronic 25 years. Here's the premium. This is how much you get back. Now we can't make a decision today, but which one of these makes the most sense based on protection and affordability? Well, the bigger one. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get your approach. Okay. That's it. So two options. That's it. That's for 45 and below. Okay. So 45 and below, I always pitch that cash back because it's cheap. Uh, I have all the options here. So let's see, hundred percent cash back, uh, living benefits, pay off that surgery, uh, disability. Oh, disability is cool too. So if you ask if someone wants disability, it's really cheap to add on, but then just keep disability in each plan. Don't take it away. Got add it. it. So if you're, if you're streamlining it and make it only thing you're changing is the coverage amount, the premium, it makes it really easy for the client to make a choice. It does. Okay. Uh, 45 and above. 
Oh, and for life insurance too. So let's say you have a life insurance lead, pretty easy. Let's say you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year. Then I would do 500,000 and then 300,000. Hey, this, this replaces that income. If you get, if you get sick or you die for your family, so they have five years to adjust to their income for 500,000, I do a 250 and a 250 rider and make it 500. And then I would do a 300,000 deal, 150, 150. Got it. And that's for the life insurance. So you just reduce it down. Right. And then if that one's too expensive, reduce it down again, 200 to 100. So you're keeping everything the same. You're just keep reducing it. So it's really simple and easy to understand. Make sense. It does. That's awesome. Okay. 45 and above. I do John Hancock. Um, and again, I only give them two options. Then the advantage of that one is I don't do any return or premium because they're 45 and above, or if they're smokers, I'll go John Hancock and do not return a premium, keep the premium low. Um, and then I just, it's an easy, it's an easy e app takes eight minutes. So that's a huge advantage. Wow. Um, so it saves you a lot of time. So you can be fast. It's instant decision. So there's no more admin work. You're like, Hey, you're approved. Good to go. I text them my phone number, my contact, Hey, call me if you need anything. And it's done. That's awesome. No more contact anymore. Uh, it pays full commission. This is big. The C all these products are that I try to write, pay me full commission. So CB 100, full comp payout. Um, John Hancock, full comp payout. Um, for anyone older, I go with Aetna because it's full commission, right? Um, usually in, usually when you're riding out in the field, most whole lives or final expenses drop about 15 points. So pretty cool that Aetna pays you full commission and it pays you full commission on modified. You know, I was talking to one of my agents say that wrote an Eagle, uh, you know, graded policy modifies graded and it dropped like 70 points or 60 points or something like that. It's, it's crazy. It's, yeah. We don't sell that product. We shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can just stick with that and all the time, even if you have to do modified, it's still price good and you get paid full commission and sure. it's no brainer. Oh, uh, there's no signatures, right? So you don't have to do any email signatures to the client. So fast and easy, uh, especially for elderly people that don't know how to use a computer. No signatures is awesome, right? How does it work? Um, you just fill it out and then there's two options. You can email it or you can ask a security question. Perfect. So you just ask a security question, boom, done. Same thing with John Hancock, no signatures. So super fast, no email, it, open it up, nothing like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and they have a lot of conditions. So they have a standard and they have a preferred on it, on that. So you can get people covered with like COPD standard, which a lot of people are going to rate you for and all different kinds of things. So if you just look at that, you know, guy chart under Ryan genie, um, I just love Aetna. Um, and then there's mutual Volma guaranteed advantage. That's the accidentals. And I always try to add that on as like a, kind of like a writer. I go, and you do qualify for the half a million dollar uh, plan with uh, mutual Volma. It's a, it's an accidental. You can get that because you got this. And so a lot of times half a million just sounds really good. Right. It does. So would you like to add on a half a million? It's only 64 bucks. <laughs> so you can start <laughs> writing that one. That one's really cool. Cause it's a short, easy app. Yeah. Right. Um, it's good for, you know, people in their fifties and sixties that maybe are not making a lot of income. So we know they can't afford full coverage. And if I tell them, Hey, you can get a $10,000 plan for this. And you're like, I'm not going to get a $10,000 plan, but you tell them an accident. They're like, Oh, half a million <laughs> yeah. cover both of us for yeah, 70 I'll, bucks. I'll push you out the car. Harry. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you have people there in their fifties or sixties, low income or unhealthy, Usually I'll just go straight to an accidental because it, you, you can get a lot of coverage and it just sounds good on paper and it does protect them. You it know, does. they could die of an accident. So, um, and it's great. You know, this app's great because you can do a husband and wife on the same app. So it saves you time, speed, right? You get more appointments on a day. It's a short app. Everyone's approved. So no admin work. Um, in some states, they have return a premium. So it makes it a no brainer. You know, like, hey, it, it, what is it again? Free. Oh, okay. What do you need to think about? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's good. Okay. And then American Amicable. Uh, this is the other products I write for if people get declined. Uh, if I get a decline on CBO 100, which does happen 10% of the time, I don't know why I'm, I'm doing the underwrite, or a, a John Hancock, I'll switch them over to the home protector on American Amicable. Okay. It pays full commission, which is great. The app is easy. I'm always looking for easy e-apps, super fast e-apps. The, the CB client and time. The CBO 100 is not as easy, but just gives the most value and it sounds great, okay? But all the rest of these are super fast. So just one signature, it's easy for the client. Um, and about a third of them that get declined on CBO 100 get approved on this one. And same with John Hancock. Same thing if I get declined on Aetna, then I'll go with uh, the senior choice um, with American Amicable because they do, they have their underwriting is a little more lenient and they allow the uh, agent to attach a letter explaining the situation so it can get approved. So you don't have to get a doctor's note or anything. You're like a, 
underwriting. You were an underwriting genie. So those are, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to do the underwriting genie. Though. <laughs> no. But those are the products. So you keep it simple. You don't have yeah. to go crazy. Just 45 and below, take them this. 45 and above, take this. 50, do this. And then add on mutual of all my accidentals. And how do you close the sale? So they, they pick it, they go through it, app's done. Like what are your final cementing words and statements and then business processes? What happens beyond the close? Um, after they got approved, I just go, congratulations, you got approved. What I do need to do is, is, is ask for referrals more. Um, I'm kind of weak at that. So I need to put against something big on my bulletin board that reminds me to ask for referrals. So I should do that better, but it's just, Hey, congratulations. You got approved. Um, in that time while we're waiting for it to get approved, I've texted my phone number. Hey, make sure you save that. If you need anything at all, please reach out anytime. Um, if you know anybody at all that could use this kind of protection, I specialize in mortgage protection, final expense, life insurance. Uh, just let me know and call me anytime. Okay. So congrats. That's it. That's it. Have a good day. See you later. Wow. Wow. Let's, uh, let's, that was, a, that was A to Z, man. That was A to Z. This, yeah. Ryan, this is exceptional. I'd love any, any final thoughts you have for or final thoughts, advice, anything that, I mean, I, I don't even know if you could have missed anything. You killed it, dude. But that was yeah, I was up taking notes because I'm very forgetful. And I was like, if I don't write this down, I'm gonna forget. But um, no, I think just just take time and practice, guys. It's 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 not rocket science. It is gonna be a struggle, it's gonna be hard, but it, it can be learned. Not like a, a I don't have a talent for sales, but I do have a talent for studying and perseverance and going, if this guy can do it, then I can do it. So that's that's really all it is, you know. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, if this was uh, helpful, drop an R R for Ryan Reynolds in the comments <laughs> below. Show him some love and appreciation. He put a lot of time. He put a, yeah, you put a lot of time, effort, energy into this. Great this, and this is all on the new website launching tomorrow. If you're watching this now, you're probably on the website. Um, and uh, and this is a goal that FFL. I mean, FFL dominates all in-home presentations in every way, shape, or form. And now we're going to dominate all virtual sales, and that's going to be on the shoulders of of great producers like Ryan and many others that are that are sharing their tips and secrets on how they do it at a very very high level. And we're just going to get better and better, which is really cool. So I'm going to keep that. tweaking, trying new things. I mean, I would love to get my no-show rate to ten percent. So oh. I'm still working on that. It's awesome, man. Well, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you coming on.